passive income. The name of this type of income has been shifted based on the times we live in. Some of y'all like to call it automated income. Some of y'all like to call it money made while you're sleeping. And all those things are accurate. But why you clicked on this video is you wanna know exactly how can you create some passive income streams and what are the rules governing passive income in general? You see, a lot of people really think that passive income is some kind of fallacy and it doesn't really exist. Other people think that any form of passive income is a scam and that any kind of money that you make, you actively have to work for it. So the first thing we gotta do is clear up the notion that passive income is a scam because that is just straight up incorrect. What passive income is, it's a different way of working your money so that it ends up working for you instead of the other way around. You do work upfront and then you receive the benefits of it in the form of either reoccurring money coming in or money that comes in later down the line. That's not a scam. It just means that you're not gonna get paid immediately, which means you're gonna have to exercise the ability to delay gratification. Sadly, a lot of people don't have that capability, so they just label it as a scam since they don't wanna do that. But if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you're not one of those people. So I'm gonna share with you my streams of passive income, exactly how I built them, so you can get some ideas as far as how you can generate passive income for yourself. So let's get into the video. Hello everyone. Now before we get into the categories of passive income that you can make, I'm gonna make you a deal. I'm only gonna talk about passive income streams that I personally have developed or are currently developing. With the exception of the last one because I haven't fully got into that one yet, but I'll let you know which one I haven't gotten into. It's still worth mentioning though because some of y'all may be interested in doing it. This is also not just gonna be another passive income video here on YouTube because I know a lot of people just make videos about passive income, just list their streams and end the video, and then maybe give a general definition of what passive income is. I'm not knocking that, but this video is gonna be a little bit different. See, chapter four and specifically chapter five in my book, The Anatomy of Financial Success, focuses on income in general, and I also talk about the different types of passive income. So what you see on the screen here is called the money magnifier. And there are four types of income in this entirety. The O stands for orthodox and the U stands for unorthodox. But those are just other words for the word steady. So we're gonna use that word here. So when looking at the four types of income in general, there's steady active income, there's unsteady active income, there's steady passive income, and unsteady passive income. We're gonna be staying focused on the right side of the money magnifier since we're talking about passive income. And since we are doing that, you probably come to the conclusion that there are two types of passive income. That's important to know because you wanna know which type of passive income you're working for and if that one is the best one for your situation. Starting off with the first type of passive income, that's the steady passive income. Now this is the type of income that you do work today and you're gonna get paid tomorrow and it's gonna keep rising based off the work that you've done yesterday. As long as you keep doing the work, it's gonna keep growing. But let's say you just decide to stop working. That income can't just suddenly take a huge drop. It needs to actually keep rising slowly, stay about the same, or maybe slightly fall a little over time. But if it starts to fall rapidly over a six month period, you're not dealing with passive income. You're dealing with active income. If the money starts to rapidly decrease after that, it can still be called passive income, but since you have neglected that stream, it makes sense that it may start to decrease. And I said may, some streams still keep going if you have the right system built around it. And just so y'all know, we're still just talking about the steady passive income. Let's go ahead and move on to the second type, which is unsteady passive income. This is the type of income, passive income, that you put in the work for and you will see no results until it hits. The moment it hits, you see results and usually the results are a lot bigger, a lot more massive than the steady passive income because you didn't see any results leading up to that. A good example of this, and we'll talk about this when I get into my streams of passive income, but a great example of this for me is a ad referrals from my YouTube channel, The App Lifestyle. A lot of y'all know that I have a full Uber Eats course that shows people how to make more money with the Uber Eats. And that course is free, just so you know. So. When that happens, people sign up with my referral code. I get paid based on when they complete a certain amount of trips. They do the trips, and then boom, I just get a random between 50 and like $500. When it hits, 
boom, it's like that. But there was no money leading up to that transaction. That is unsteady passive income. So now that we have the right lens to look at passive income through, we're gonna start breaking down the different types of passive income that I have, how I built them, and how you can look at doing the same if you're interested in that particular way of building passive income. So these first three ways are gonna fall under earned income. I'm not gonna explain what earned income is because that would make this video way too long. If y'all want a separate video on that, just let me know. But that just means that it's gonna be taxed at the highest rate. So be aware of that. So the first way that you can build passive income is to create some type of a digital product. The reason being is a digital product is something that people can purchase at any point of the day, any point of the night, and you do the work on this once. Once you do that, then you can just see the money start rolling in. Based on whatever you decide to make a digital product around, you might wanna consider upgrading it or updating it maybe a year or two down the line, but it still fits our criteria of passive income because you don't have to do anything to keep that money flowing in. And if you choose to update it, it's gonna be further down the line. It's not gonna be like you gotta update it in like three or four months. A personal example of building a digital product for myself is the Financial Anatomy monthly budgeting template. Some of y'all actually have that template, but that's something that I designed using Excel and Google spreadsheets. And when people purchase or download that, I'm getting paid passive income because them doing that doesn't require me doing anything. I set everything up. I have the sales page already ready to go. They read it, they see the value it has, then they purchase it. I'm not in that equation. And that can happen while I'm making this video or it can happen while I'm sleeping at night. Another example of a digital product is my book, The Anatomy of Financial Success. The same thing I just said about that Financial Anatomy monthly budgeting template applies to the book. The only exception is since it's on Google Play and Amazon and uh, Apple Books, as well as the various other platforms, it does have an algorithm boost that happens when sales trigger for my book. So when it starts selling a lot, the algorithm of these different platforms will start promoting it for me because if it's making them money, they want to get more money. So it's in their best interest to promote it. So it does get a little boost based on that. And I'm particularly talking about Amazon. If something starts selling well on Amazon, Amazon is gonna start shoving it in a bunch of people's faces because it's making the money. As far as which type of passive income these are, it really depends on how well you systemize this. When it started out, it was unsteady passive income because there was, wasn't really a system around it. It's just, hey, some people are gonna find it, some people aren't, and when they find it, are they gonna buy it? Kind of sporadic. But for me, it's turned into steady passive income because I have various YouTube videos that talk about the template and the book. And I also have an email list with automated sequences that inform people about the book and the template, the value it brings and what they get out of it. And it has links to go purchase it. So there's a system that's driving traffic to those sales pages and the percentage of people are going to buy. And that's happening without me doing anything. So the easiest way to translate this into your life is to find something that you're an expert in. And it could be anything. You could be an expert swimmer, a diver, coder, whatever. Write a book on it and then publish that bad boy. That's probably the most direct way of tapping into this digital product market. Of course, there are other ways if you're um, in the IT field, you might be a designer. Maybe you can uh, make some templates that people in your field could use and download and they're willing to pay you for it. So the second way that you can get some passive income is by making an online course. Now you may be saying that doesn't that fall under, di under digital products? It actually does, but I put it in its own separate category because it just is a different ball game to make a course versus making a template or writing a book. So to make a course, you need to have an expertise in uh, something. And then you need to get a few testimonials under that so that people are gonna be more willing to purchase that course. Now courses can run from like $100 to like $2,000. It really depends on how sophisticated you wanna make it and what kind of audience you're trying to go after. What's your ideal customer and what are they willing to pay? But a lot of people assume that you have to make the course yourself and market the course and just do everything. And that's not necessarily the case. For example, what you're looking at right here is called the Maximum Delivery Profits course on the Rideshare Guy. It's a course that me and Harry made together and you see me on the screen and you see me as an instructor. Now I'm an instructor and I get income based off of them using my videos in this course. 
but I'm not responsible for the marketing of the course. It's a rideshare guy course. So that means they're gonna take care of all the marketing and take care of all the designing of the course. All I had to do was record the videos on my expertise on how to make the most money with these delivery apps. Now, I'm more than welcome to market the course. It's in my best interest to do so. In fact, if you're interested in that course, you can click the link in the description below and there you can find out more about the course and make a purchase if you're interested. See what I just did? I did market the course, but that's not required for me to make money because they're responsible for the marketing of that course. So you don't always have to necessarily create the whole course in order to make money off of a course. You can do like I did and become an instructor of someone who's already making a course and they just handle the heavy lifting of the sales, of the marketing, of designing the uh, sales page, of doing the SEO, all that good stuff. And as far as my own course, I'm getting ready to launch a course for freelancers that will show people exactly how to make money as a self-employed individual, what's the right systems they gotta have in place, how do they get their clients, how do they ex expand to get more clients, and how do they have the right accounting structure in place. I'm getting ready to launch that course in probably a few months. But I wanted to talk about both of these because they're two different versions of profiting off of course. Before we continue on with the video, I do wanna say thanks for hanging with me so far. Hopefully you got yourself a snack, you got yourself a drink so that you can hang in there and absorb this awesome information. If you're part of my younger audience, I wanna give a huge shout out to you for taking the time to invest into your future from a knowledge perspective. If you're part of my older audience, I wanna say thanks for taking some time out of your day, maybe away from your friends, from your family, from things you may need to do to learn more about passive income so that you can create more opportunities for yourself to spend more time with the ones that you love. And if you're finding value in this video so far, give me a thumbs up, much appreciated. Consider subscribing if you're new and hitting that bell notification if you want more personal finance videos from me in the future. A third way of making passive income, and this is one of my personal favorites, is affiliate marketing. Now y'all are no stranger to this, y'all probably heard it a few times, even on this channel but that doesn't decrease its relevance when it comes to passive income. So there are literally hundreds of thousands of dollars being made on the internet as we speak every single second. And these companies wanna get in front of the right person in order for them to buy their products. If they could help it though, they would prefer not to hire someone in terms of advertising on a part-time or full-time basis, because that means they had to pay them a salary, pay them wages, and maybe even pay them benefits if they're gonna be an employee. So instead of doing that, they would rather just design an affiliate program where people can sign up and market their products and they'll just pay them a small commission, a small fee. Well, guess what? That's exactly what affiliate marketing is. And this is probably the way that has the least barrier of entry in terms of passive income. The best way to get involved in this is to just look at what you're already consuming, what you're already using, and check to see if they have an affiliate program. If they don't, it couldn't hurt to reach out to them to see if they have an affiliate program. Some personal examples for me would be an Amazon affiliate, specifically for me, my book, because that sales page that links to buying my book on Amazon, well, I'm an Amazon affiliate, so that's an affiliate link. Amazon actually doesn't mind that. In fact, they encourage you to do it as long as you make sure you say that they're buying your book from Amazon. Otherwise, you can get in trouble, so make sure you do that. Another way of tapping that affiliate marketing share is through your apps in your phone. Many of them will actually give you a little something if you send people their way to download their app and then do something. Usually these apps are the financial apps, but it's not like they have a high barrier to entry if you want to get some of that. Great example is the investing apps. Everyone knows about Weevil and Referring other people gets you two free stocks, sometimes four, sometimes six. They actually run different promotions at different times. M1 Finance pays about between 10 to $30 for every person. You send their way to download the app and then they deposit $100. Most of y'all know that there are several videos about Cash App on this channel. Well, when some people sign up and then they send $10 to a friend or someone, I get $10 and those start to stack up. That qualifies under affiliate marketing. Of course, this isn't just investing apps. Some of y'all saw my DoorDash review where I did DoorDash for a whole weekend as a dasher. And then I described exactly was it worth it after I added up all the money I made, calculated the taxes, did the math, then showed how much money I made per hour. In that video, I mentioned if you're interested in signing up for DoorDash, you can do so in the link below. Well, guess what? That link is a referral link, which is pretty much the same as affiliate, but 
it's a referral link and if a person signs up and they do a certain amount of trips guess what i get a certain amount of money which you can see on the screen right now and this next form of affiliate slash referral marketing is probably one that you have access to right now immediately you just hadn't thought about it but many people that offer services in the finance industry will pay you for clients or referrals people who offer health insurance auto insurance whoever does your taxes check to see if they have some kind of referral program and usually especially people who do taxes do have something in place where they'll break you off a little something if you send clients their way this could be a flat rate like fifty dollars or it could be actually a percentage of whatever the tax return is going to be so next time you get your taxes done you might want to have that conversation right before you do if you want to learn more about affiliate marketing specifically you want to check this video out where i show how i spent 260 dollars and made over fourteen thousand dollars using affiliate marketing they are going to heavy detail about how to really make affiliate marketing work and make the big bucks we're now going to change gears to royalty income which is handled a little differently from earned income like i said we're not going to cover that in this video if you want that just let me know in the comments below i just want you to know that these next waves of passive income are going to be royalty income and there's no better way to start off the royalty income ways by covering the fourth way which is to write a book now a lot of y'all think that writing a book just means that oh i just have a physical book available someone can buy it well there's several ways to uh, get a book out there there's writing the book then there's having it available on ebook and then there's uh, narrating the audiobook and if you don't want to narrate it you can pay someone to narrate it for you but those are three different separate streams of passive income that can be happening if you're willing to put the work in on writing a book and for someone who's been an Amazon bestseller, I can tell you don't underestimate this because it's a great way to build credibility in your field and of course, earn you some passive income. Since it was released, The Anatomy of Financial Success has sold around like a thousand copies, but that's not really what the book was meant to do. It wasn't even really meant to just like sell a whole bunch of copies. What it was meant to do is establish credibility and get people into my funnel so that I can offer them more expensive services like my coaching or future course. And in regards to that, it's done a perfect job. Now, when you start making passive income, you'll start to notice that a lot of these will start to overlay each other, meaning that one helps the other and vice versa. See how the book literally just led into something else we already discussed, which is a course. And we're not covering coaching because that's not passive income, but that's still another source of income that the book is helping to produce. If you want to know the benefits of writing a book and exactly what are some good ways to get started, you want to check this video out where I talk about the reasons why I wrote a book and why some reasons you might want to write one too, as well as the methodology on how to do it. Because it is an in-depth subject and we don't want this video to be longer than it already is. Moving right along, we have starting a YouTube account. Now, there was a change last year, towards the end of last year, where YouTube started classifying its income as royalty income. That's why it's in this section and not the earned income. But that aside, starting a YouTube channel is a great way to enter the passive income space if you have something entertaining to offer your audience or something informative like I'm doing right now. When it comes to being informative on the YouTube channel, you basically got four choices. I'll say five. You have uh, health and wellness, you have the finance niche, you have relationships, which that one is blowing up right now. You have spirituality, and then you have tech. Pick one of those, and within that category, get you a niche that you're most comfortable with and most knowledgeable about, and then just get in front of the camera and start putting in work. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that provides the frame and foundation for you to build off of and improve your skills. And for those of y'all that are gonna sit here and tell me, well, YouTube isn't passive income, what are you talking about? It can have the potential to be passive income if you set it up right. My other channel, The App Lifestyle, for like four or five months, I actually was not posting, I was trying to get this channel off the ground. And it still consistently produced between 70 and $100 on a regular basis. And I didn't do anything with it. It was just sitting there. No uploads, no nothing. How is that possible? Because I made evergreen content that people were always searching for. That whole channel is based around making money with the delivery apps and the rideshare apps, Uber, Lyft, Postmates, DoorDash, etc. And that search demand isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So that channel doesn't require me to do anything because I set it up the right way with evergreen content. 
And that's exactly what you can do if you want to start a YouTube channel and tap into that passive income. The sixth way of making passive income, and this is one I haven't personally done, but I do know people who do it. I just call this the miscellaneous downloads. And the way this works is if you got skills with that camera or you're a photographer, or you know what, you can just use your phone if you have a good eye for making things look good on the phone. Take a few pictures and then upload them to a service like iStock or Shuttershock. And when someone like me, a creator who looks to use pictures in their videos, pays for the right to use that photo, the platform that it's on takes a small little percentage, but you get the rest because you get royalty income. In other words, you take the right pictures, upload them to a platform, and then just sit back and watch the income come in. As long as the pictures are of quality, you can best believe people are gonna wanna use them in their videos or in their articles or whatever type of media, and you're gonna be making some passive income, and you only had to do that work once. We're now in the final stretch, and we're gonna cover investment income, and we're gonna start off by talking about the stock market. So there are two main ways you can make money off the stock market. You can make money off of capital gains, which means that you bought it at a certain price, then you sell it at a higher price later, or you can make money off of dividends that are paid. Dividends is a share in the profits that a company has made in that quarter. And sometimes they pay monthly, some of them pay semi-annually. The standard is quarterly, so that's kind of what you can expect. The more stock you own in a company, the higher your dividend payments are gonna be because they pay a certain amount per share. Now, the easiest way to get started in the stock market is probably just invest in the S&P 500. That's the 500 biggest companies in America. And then you'll have dividends coming in that way or you can reinvest them. But if you wanna get more sophisticated into dividends and how much they pay, et cetera, you'll wanna look at the dividend yield and know how to analyze the stock for dividend safety because you don't want them to cut it. But if you're not willing to do that, you might wanna just stick to blue chip stocks or index funds, or like I said, just do the S&P 500. And if you want more information on like strategies on how to make passive income using the dividend method, check this video out where I talk about three easy ways to make passive income. Of course, that's the steady side. The unsteady side is if you're looking at growth stocks and you wanna make money from capital gains. The reason this is gonna be unsteady is because you buy a stock, then somewhere down the line, the price increased, then you sell the stock. Well, you made money that far in the future. You didn't make it immediately. It didn't slowly rise with time and you were getting payments every single month. That's why it would be unsteady passive income. There's a science to analyzing growth stocks and making that work. So you wanna make sure that you invest in your education before you start investing in actual stocks because without the education, you're not an investor, you're a gambler. And the eighth and final way of making passive income is through real estate. Two main ways you can do it. Pretty similar to the stocks. You can buy and then sell it later when it's appreciated in value or you can rent that property out and make monthly income that way. Now, this is the one that I haven't personally done. I have taken several real estate courses and when the time is right, I am gonna buy a property to rent out. That time isn't right now, but I will just say that you gotta know which one that you want going into it. And there's a science to both methods. So pick which one you want and then act accordingly in terms of investing in your education. Now that concludes eight modern ways that you can make some good passive income. You'll probably notice I didn't include some that a lot of people talk about, which is membership groups. So if you have some kind of expertise or you have content that you want people to pay to have access to, you can start a membership group and they can have access to that content and uh, group coaching, that kind of thing. I don't count that as passive income because if you stop doing the work, if you stop doing your monthly webinars or whatever you're doing or promising your um, customers, they're gonna start to trickle down and drop off. And every time you lose someone in that membership group, you lose money. Guess what? Remember that six month rule we talked about where you should be able to leave this stuff alone for at least six months and not see like a huge drop in your earnings? Well, you leave a membership group alone for six months, see what happens. We'll leave it alone for three months. You're gonna see people start to leave pretty soon because they want value on a monthly basis in a membership group. And being honest, some people try and set it up passively. I don't think you can really service people with a passive model if it's gonna be a membership group. You really need to be present if you wanna really give people value. I don't really like the concept of trying to make a membership group passive in the first place. 
they're paying to have more access to you and more access to content and you kind of owe them that so i don't recommend trying to even make that passive to start with the only exception is if you're going to have your staff handle the whole thing and some people might get a little irritated about that they're really paying for more access to you and if they don't get it they may leave all together so I don't include that in passive income. But with that being said, we now covered eight ways that you can get started making some passive income. If you found value in this video, be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing if you're new and hitting that bell notification if you want to be notified when we drop another video. Get out there and take control of your financial destiny. See you in the next video.